A number of institutions in Egypt um, concur to regulate the media system and journalistic professions, including the Ministry of Information, the Supreme Press Council, the Journalist Syndicate and the Audience Rights Associations. What are their respective roles and powers? Okay, in Egypt we have, as you told now, uh, four main institutions for regulating the media, especially for regulating journalism. We have a uh, Ministry of Information, we have Supreme Press Council, Egyptian uh, Journalist Syndicate, and we have, after uh, the revolution, uh, we have two associations for audiences' rights. Okay, but I think the uh, strongest body of them or the strongest uh, institution is the Egyptian Journalist Syndicate because it, um, uh, have, uh, it has a very long uh, history in Egypt and it has a power to put code of ethics. It has a power because uh, there are about uh, many thousands of uh, uh, journalists uh, are already registered as a members in this syndicate. So it's the strongest body in Egypt uh, for regulating uh, journalism. Okay, and uh, nowadays after uh, the revolution, we try to uh, change uh, the uh, Supreme Press Council and the Ministry of Information to a new body instead of them. It will uh, call um, until now, <laughs> we put this call for him, for it, uh, uh, National Council for Media. National Council for Media. Okay. What would be the main difference between this new body that is about to be um, um, instituted and the old ones? What would, um, especially in terms of regulating the mm. rights and responsibilities of journalists? Good. It will include uh, National Council for Media. It will include, as suggested until now, it will include uh, many experts, many practitioners, many academics, um, besides the uh, government representatives. So uh, it will not like the, uh, the Ministry of Information. It's, you know, as a hand for government, okay? But if you have the, this collection, practitioners, experts, ac academics, you can find uh, good results for changing in media landscape. Um, you have also suggested um, that um, one of the possible ways to change the current system and, and, and achieve possibly uh, a, a better regulation of journalistic professions would be to move towards a different model, a model of self-regulation, for instance, by implementing a code of ethics. Um, are there any drafts already available for it? Uh, at what stage are the procedures? Yeah. yeah, we have already discussed the new draft for Code of Ethics in Egypt because we have already one, uh, uh, we have already an old Code of Ethics, but it's in general discusses um, about six or seven points. And the new one, it will be um, uh, for details, it will discuss many details about uh, ethics uh, for improving the practice uh, for the journalists and media persons. Um, co new code of ethics uh, will include four main uh, groups or four main kinds of uh, ethical practices. Uh, it will prevent, uh, of course, you know, we have many violations. It will prevent um, bias. It will uh, prevent uh, some kind of defamation, libel, slander. It will prevent, uh, I think, um, uh, hate speech. And it will be very important to prevent such kind of hate speeches in uh, newspapers. Okay. So this code would um, provide for some responsible for some responsible um, practice exercise of the profession yeah. that the journalist should meet, and therefore will include some um, some limitations, so to say, to the exercise of free speech, like the prohibition of hate speech, 
um, and, and to also mention the case of bias, what would be the main rights, what would be the main legal protections for journalists that the code would um, provide for? Uh, I think it will be uh, the same code of ethics because it will include uh, some new rights for the professionals, for journalists as professionals and the right to inform people anything and uh, how to access uh, and uh, available to access to information. But of course, you uh, have to take into con you your consideration that um, when you have uh, the right to inform, that also you have many responsibilities because you work in a society, not working for um, some uh, parties or a specific people, or, you know, that you have many, many uh, points of view and many uh, uh, attitudes, many opinions, and you have to get your responsibilities to deal with all landscape. At present state, what are the main ethical um, standards for journalists in the, in the Arabic countries in terms of rights and responsibilities? Okay, uh, I think uh, we have three main uh, ethical uh, practices and we um, think that they are, uh, mm, you can say, that the strongest in uh, the responsibilities of journalists. Uh, of course, as we are in uh, Arabic countries, uh, we believe in uh, religion that you can't uh, hate religion and you can't hate uh, prophets okay that is one of our main uh, ethical practices and um, we have uh, the right of privacy and um, due to our traditions in Arabic countries it's uh, very um, important right that you have to respect the privacy of the people and don't invade their uh, private life to show some uh, relations between them and their um, kids, their, uh, the husband, the wife, and that is uh, forbidden um, due to our traditions and due to our culture in Arabic countries. Uh, and of course, uh, the misleading when you publish some rumors or when you publish false news, um, that of course uh, we can call it misleading for public opinion, um, that of course it's forbidden also. So it's a, sp it's a particular understanding of some facets of freedom of speech and journalistic profession professionalism that depend on the uh, local culture. Um, yeah. For instance, when you, you just mentioned the case of privacy, which, which has a foundational role in the, in the local understanding of uh, freedom of speech. Or sure. Let me clear something to you. That, uh, I think uh, ethical uh, practices and the code of ethics for journalism, um, it will be the similar in, in, all, in all the countries in the whole world. But of course, you know that there are the uh, private culture for uh, each uh, or every uh, uh, kind of countries. And of course, you know that uh, due to our um, religious culture in Arabic countries, we have um, many um, cautions about uh, talking uh, hate, hate speeches for religions and that I think uh, it will be uh, distinguished in our code of ethics, but all the uh, ethical uh, practices, it will be as uh, similar in many countries. Uh, so mm, uh, when, when you say similar in many countries, you mean in comparing like for instance, Western models? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, Western um, models, because when we are uh, talking about the draft uh, of this code of ethics, we already reviewed many code of ethics such as uh, associations uh, for American editors in US and many code of ethics uh, for European and also we made uh, some um, uh, discussions with experts and with uh, professionals, um, mm, some of them international. When you mention this um, particular um, 
cultural exceptions or cultural appreciation that play a role in shaping um, how ethical and, and legal standards are um, provided in, in, in Arabic countries. Um, in a comparative perspective, can you see that um, um, this kind of provisions are quite similar from one country to another in an Arabic world, or there are some countries that just stand out as a, as a particular model? No, I think uh, when you look, have a look for uh, the code of ethics in, in all the Arabic countries, you will see, I think, 90% uh, similar articles in these codes. Um, uh, let me uh, tell, you, tell you that I uh, already conducted um, a study for uh, photojournalism ethics in the Arabic world, and I found uh, that it's the same. <laughs> the same, not uh, pornography, not something uh, uh, misleading, um, the same. Um, even you can find some um, details, uh, the same. Um, but uh, of course you can find uh, one or two articles, it's different, uh, but uh, in, in general it's the same articles in Code of Essex in all Arabic world. So there's a high degree of homogeneity. Yeah. Um, who should be, what, what would be the scope of this Code of Ethics? So who would be subject to, to, to the rules provided in, this, in these codes? Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, um, Code of Essex is uh, um, one of the self-regulatory mechanisms. So, uh, journalists, of course, themselves have to participate and uh, take the initiative to put the articles of Code of Ethics. And, of course, as academics and as experts in the media and journalism, we can coordinate uh, the journalists and of course uh, the uh, state representatives um, will coordinate uh, to improve our media situation or our journalism situation in Egypt after the revolution. But I think that uh, will be um, the great responsibility that the journalists themselves have to put it have to rethink about how to develop it and how to uh, improve the uh, Code of Ethics um, articles uh, because I think it will be as a protection for them uh, from not to be arrested and uh, for uh, uh, the audience of course to look uh, cred uh, to raise their credibility to the newspapers and to journalism. You know, if you find some unethical practices, uh, uh, you will not look uh, credibility for, for the newspapers. But if you um, find such kind of respecting for uh, uh, ethical practices, you will trust the journalism himself. Okay, and that I think it will good for him and for the profession. Definitely. So you're suggesting that the drafting process should be as open and public and yeah. as participatory as possible. Yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, who would be subject to these codes, and I'm especially thinking of the great role that um, um, new media such as blogs or, or even social network websites recently played in the, in the Arab Spring. Mm -hmm. um, who would be subject to the respect of these codes? Would it only be for professional journalists? Would it be addressed to news disseminators in a general sense? Okay, um, journalists in Egypt uh, uh, keep in touch with uh, all the bloggers. And uh, I think if we have a new code of ethics, it will be already coordinate, uh, find coordination from the pluggers and they will help to uh, develop such articles in a new code of ethics. But then would they be obliged to respect the standards? Would, only, would also be the bloggers obliged to respect the rules provided in the code? Until now, we don't think that uh, this code of ethics will be for the bloggers. Uh, I think until now, we have the limits that it will be for the professionals themselves, uh, the, the journalists, the professional journalists. Thank you very much, Nermin. Thanks. Thanks.